I'm Lily Wangchuk. Uh, I'm currently the president of a registered political party in Bhutan called Drukchi Wangchokpa, which means uh, Bhutan Social Democratic Party. I think uh, there is a lot that uh, nations can learn from each other. It doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, you know, from the developed to underdeveloped or the developing. But I think uh, more developed, uh, you know, nations can also learn from developing small developing country like Bhutan. And I think uh, even though uh, Bhutan is a small country. There is so much that we can offer, there is so much we can share with the world. Um, foremost that I can think about is uh, Bhutan had the advantage of opening up very late to the outside world and we have been able to preserve our tradition and culture very well. And I think this is something I think in the age of globalization that, uh, you know, it, I mean modernization could happen at the cost of your own tradition and culture. And considering that Europe also has a very strong culture and tradition. I think this is something that uh, Europe could consider learning from Bhutan in trying and maintaining that important balance between modernization and preservation of our own traditional culture and uh, uh, traditional values. Um, also, I think uh, Bhutan may probably be the only nation in the world where democracy has been introduced by none other than our king. Uh, at the peak of uh, his reign, His Majesty, the fourth king of Bhutan, His Majesty Jigme Singh Wangchuk, introduced democracy in Bhutan. And uh, it was, uh, you know, against resistance of uh, change from the people because uh, over the last four decades of our development, uh, Bhutan has seen rapid uh, development and that people had no complaints about the system of governance in place. The Bhutanese people were quite happy with the monarchy system of governance that we have had and that they felt that there was no need for change. So uh, our king, uh, you know, Singh, His Majesty Jigme Singh Wangchu had felt that uh, in, the, in keeping with the changing environment and in keeping with the changing needs, uh, it was time that uh, Bhutan should have a government by the people, for the people, and uh, you know, largely, uh, you know, democracy. Therefore, was introduced in the country, and it was really a top-down initiative. Um, also, I think uh, the, uh, His Majesty had also inserted a clause in a constitution that uh, even. No person in the country should be indispensable. For that matter, even the king of Bhutan should not be indispensable. So we ever even have a retirement age for the king, that a king of Bhutan should compulsorily retire at the age of 65. And I think this is also a very valuable thing that uh, Europe could learn from a small nation, Bhutan. In, in recent years, Bhutan has also won increasing appreciation and admiration for a new development approach called, called the Gross National Happiness. This concept was envisioned by His Majesty the Fourth King again back in the 70s. And he felt that, uh, you know, uh, looking at many countries around the, around the world uh, where, uh, you know, huge amount of development had taken place, but it does not necessarily mean that the citizens are happy. So His Majesty has come up with this concept of gross national happiness, uh, which is an alternative to gross domestic product, and it actually means creating a conducive environment for people to pursue happiness. And uh, this is something also I think uh, Bhutan can share with the world, that uh, you know, gross national happiness, creating a conducive environment for the citizens to pursue happiness. Of course, uh, GNH uh, does not mean that uh, gross domestic product is uh, not important. I think uh, the two should go in hand in hand. I think most countries in pursuit of our development, we have entirely focused on infrastructure building and we have focused on gross domestic product. But here, you know, the, the gross national happiness is supposed to be an alternative where we mainstream the, you know, gross national happiness in all our policies, programs and projects 
which also does not overlook the, the need for creating an environment which will allow people to pursue happiness in addition to pursuit of economic growth.